Jackson, and this is Noah Drake Bell, baby. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the episode of Geeked and Update. This is where we, me and Noah, cover all the stuff that happened this past week. And uh, Noah, we have a lot to cover today. Wow, what a week! It's uh, been a great week. Great week. A lot to cover. Very excited about it. You know, this Geek and Update. So, you know, we watch the stuff, so you don't have to. And we talk about it. You know, maybe you've seen it. Just keep the conversation going. But we have a lot to talk about. Starting with what? Let's start off with the two movies that dropped on streaming uh, this week. The Mike uh, Tyson biopic on Hulu and Samaritan with uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone. I cannot get that name out. Wow. Um, I'll tell you right now, Noah, I didn't watch either one of these movies. Uh, They don't interest me in the slightest. (laughs) Well, I'm here to tell you that I also don't give a flying rat's ass about either one. You know, I actually heard, unfortunately, that maybe uh, Sly is going through a divorce uh, oh. and um, maybe this is kind of a payment kind of movie for him to help out with said divorce. And the Mike Tyson biopic, um, you know, I don't know. I might end up watching it, but it's not anything that I want to rush out and see. But you guys, if you if we're wrong or we're way off bat, you better let us know in the comments below if you're watching this video right now. If you're like Nerdy Dustin, Noah Drake Bell, you need to watch it now. I will happily eat crow. And after I get done eating crow, I'll probably just drink some coffee to wash the crow down my throat. And then I'll watch Mike and Samaritan. So let's check out the rotten tomatoes for Samaritan. Cause I have not also for the uh, biopic of Mike Tyson. Th- the reason I don't want to watch is because I've grown up watching Mike Tyson. I've watched everything this man has done since the eighties. I don't need to see, I don't need to relive it. <laughs> I wonder if the biopic ends with his cameo in the hangover. Oh, that's yeah, that could happen. All right. So rotten tomato score for Samaritan. The critics hate it at a 37, but the audience Ooh. loves this movie. It is at a 79. Um, interesting. Interesting. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's check out uh, real quick. Uh, Thelma check Adams. Uh, she is an ARP movies for grownups critic. Uh, she says, if you like a Stallone action pick and uh, giggling bad guys driving old muscle cars, this one's for you. Well, well, that, I don't think it's for me. I'm going to pass on it. Okay, Boomer. It's a Boomer fit. Boomer action flick. Oh, we're going to get so much hate. Oof. Oh, so much hate. Uh, yeah, that's the movies. Uh, let's jump into some television. We got a new episode of She-Hulk this week. Wow. I absolutely loved the episode. If you want to check out my review on it, that you can check that out on the channel. Uh, Noah, I have not talked to you about this episode yet. What were your thoughts on it? I got one word and that is Wolverine. So that is the hot take, hot topic all around the interwebs. If you click on any sort of She-Hulk episode two video anywhere in the world, even in Indonesia, I, you know, I got a VPN. I'm like, what are they talking about? She-Hulk in Indonesia. It is Wolverine. It's the headline where Jennifer Walters is scrolling through. It's, I love this about Marvel, by the way, is these little Easter eggs for you and me and all these wonderful people who share the same passion but they put it on YouTube and we sort of dissect everything. Man fights with claws in bar brawl was a headline. Like, who is that? It's not Vega. It's not Vega. Right? It's not a Street Fighter reference, dude. It is Wolver freaking Reen himself. And it's not Hugh Jackman. I'm going to tell you that right now. Nah, it will not be Hugh Jackman. I was uh, given some flack from a few of the people that watched my review. They're like, why and how did you not talk about Wolverine? Um, because everyone else was, <laughs> and now we're talking about it. <laughs> and then now we're talking about it. So I didn't, I didn't really see the point. Uh, but it is a cool Easter egg. We also got our very first episode of House of the Dragon, which, thank goodness, Sundays are back to being Game of Thrones nights. Uh, so as you can tell from behind me, uh, I am moving, and uh, I think we mentioned this last week. I'm moving into a new house, which means that me and Noah will have a, a new studio together. So what I'm assuming is Sundays, me and Noah can probably get together and watch Game of Thrones and maybe we do can like a watch party. Let's do a watch um, party. Let's do a watch party. You guys, let us know in the comments below if you want to join Nerdy Dust and Noah Drake Bell on a watch party for uh, Game of Thrones. Well, House of the Dragon. It's House Game of the Dragon. Dragon. It's the, yeah. Uh, and it's very Game of Thrones. I mean, very, <laughs> that episode those was... Guys- 
those guys are playing the Game of Thrones harder in the first episode than I've seen the Game of Thrones being played, man. Oh, you know, and Matt real. Smith, what a fucking revolution. I, Matt Smith and dragons. That's all I need in this world. For real. That it's the 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 birth scene alone. I was like, that's Game of Thrones. That is so Game of Thrones what is happening right now. Oh, we have to talk about the chair, the throne. Oh my, I absolutely love the way that chair looks with all the swords. Much better. Oh man, and it's even like, it cuts him. Like, cuts I mean, it's oh, so, that little detail, I loved it. Um, so speaking of House of Dragons, it has been announced this week. They are renewing it for a season two. Absolutely not shocked at all and very thankful for that. Let's, let's, let's have this whole show erase the last season and a half for two seasons of Game of Thrones. Let's make it happen. Make up for it, HBO. And that's what they're going to do. I really believe this this show is going to just take off like a dragon in flight. Oh, my God, you're here for the good analogies. Keep watching. <laughs> all I heard all week was everyone loving this. Everyone I talked to was like, Game of Thrones is back. This is very like season one through four-esque. It's like... Yeah. The, the action's there, the story's there, the drama, the, the, the gore is there. The, it's all there. It's Game of Thrones. It's back, and I'm excited. I'm excited for season two. Um, anything else you want to say about House of Dragons? I just, like, new episode, you know, we film these Geek End updates on Sundays. Another episode premieres tonight, and I'm very, very excited to watch it. And I hope you guys are, too, if you guys are enjoying um, – the show let us know in the comments below what's your favorite part about the season one so far we'd love to know yeah what's your and, and let us know why your favorite part is matt smith absolutely <laughs> yeah and how sexy matt smith is and his beautiful hair what, I, what? Uh, <laughs> all right let's go from streaming to uh dc and warner brothers it seems like dc and warner brothers is always in the news now uh we have a couple of things to talk about one as we all know, there is a show, a cartoon uh, coming out, uh, Batman the Cape Crusader, uh, done by Kevin Conroy. I should say coming out. We don't know yet because Warner Brothers has decided not to release it themselves, but instead shop it around. Uh, but the good news is, is as of today, Netflix, Apple, and I believe NBC are all interested. Um, Why not? <laughs> how could you Pick not be? How, how could you not? Um, you know what I think is is interesting in the whole thing, you know, because everyone's talking about David Zasloff and the Warner Brothers Discovery merger. Um, I reread that uh, they're selling the CW. They're selling off the CW. So maybe that is where this all leads to. So whoever buys, you know, the Cape Crusader maybe buys the CW and puts that kind of content on a new streaming platform or integrated into that. So whoever buys the CW, I would think I'm not a uh, executive yet in the, the TV and film industry, but that's what I would do. I purchase the, C the CW and I would purchase stuff like that from uh, Warner discovery. It's a shame. Uh, I wish it was somewhere on HBO max or somewhere, but Hey, someone will pick it up. I'll watch the shit out of it. I love Kevin Conroy period. Best, best Batman ever fight me, fight me internet. <laughs> uh yeah it's really it's really weird what they're doing over there with uh the animation stuff i don't i think honestly warner brothers should just have a dc animated like section all on its own like marvel has their marvel animated uh section it's all on its own i think dc should do the same thing but also shopping around is not a bad idea either that way uh it's like if you know say i personally actually think peacock would be a good spot for this uh say peacock gets it so now peacock has to like pay uh discovery and warner brothers you know to have it so it's like guaranteed money whereas if they threw it on their streaming service i mean it's not guaranteed that more people are going to subscribe to your service because you know so david is a very as we can tell he is very business oriented <laughs> like let's put it this way y'all one of the first things david did when he went into warner brothers executives offices he yelled at them for letting uh Clint Eastwood make uh Cry Machio. <laughs> Why are you guys letting this man make movies? Uh so he's 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 the kind of guy that does not want a single dollar wasted. And I don't blame him. So if you're not going to make money, why do it? If you can make money off it, he has a route to do that. So where do you think this should end up? 
So I do think that uh, let's let's go ahead and put it over on Peacock or Paramount Plus. Um, I think the either one would be good. And with everyone's covered the the big news, of course, Batgirl getting the axe. But one of the weirdest things happened to me in one of the weirdest places, and that is Walmart. So as you guys know, if you're watching Clyde Sky Entertainment or a thousand other entertainment YouTube channels, it was there was a leaked costume reveal of you know michael keaton's new batman costume right we saw pictures of it everywhere i'll be damned if that costume isn't available for kids at walmart to buy they had they they thought that it was going to do that well that they produced a batman costume from the batgirl tv show movie whatever it was going to be that never happened and now kids are wearing it that's so awesome. I love that's, that. That's wild, man. It's almost as similar to like um, Revenge of the Jedi, right? Like when there was going to be like, instead of Return of the Jedi, it was going to be Revenge of the Jedi. And they did a bunch of, uh, Lucasfilm did a bunch of like marketing and stuff. And you, people bought jackets and different things. It's very similar. Um, but yeah, you can buy a Keaton Batman costume based on his new costume that was going to be in Batgirl. That's and you can so be that for Halloween. That's so sweet. And I'll speak of Revenge of the Jet. I would love to. There are posters out there of it, and I would love to have one um, so much. Uh, speaking of Batgirl real quick, did you see this? They're actually going to let the cast and crew have a small screening of the movie. I think they should. I think that that's is, uh, that's pretty awesome. I mean, it's not, as far as I know, it's not finished uh, with the effects. So it's going to be interesting to to see. Um, Got that too. Sell it. Sell it to somebody you know what's fun and you know what might be a masterful plan is you do you know what movie and tv geeks like you and i love what's that cult classic films yeah. films like the boondock saints films like film stories and film theories of what ifs like you know hard to find that stuff doesn't really exist anymore we had to dive into like you know someone's collection or some a friend of a friend had a bootleg copy i think that in the near future, a full cut of the of Batgirl will be out there somewhere, and the public will see it. I, I have a feeling. You know, I may be 100 well, percent. Right, I do think that we're going to see it one day. Maybe it'll be on aisle 12 of a convention, bootlegged on a VHS. But you better fucking believe I'm going to buy that and watch it. So uh, John Campia this past week said something interesting that I really loved about the whole situation. He was like, "What if the Batgirl?" is another Schneider cut thing where they're purposely doing this. And in yep. like six months from now, they're going to start a trend called release Batgirl. And uh, you know, who knows if, if they do, that is a, a, a really smart marketing play. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. Then who knows, maybe one day we will get to see it, but I don't know. I mean, if they're, if Dave is trying to take a loss on it for tax reasons, that means it really, it can't get out. So like, I don't know. Well, we we saw Fantastic Four, the Roger Corman movie that was never supposed to be seen for the same reason, right? That's so true. it'll be seen. Come on, like, like if if Roger Corman's Fantastic Four movie that that was just made so that no <laughs> one can watch it or no one can make another Fantastic Four film, we're gonna see the Batgirl. Hey, in the comments below, unrelated, let us know if you've seen uh, <laughs> Roger Corman's Fantastic Four cut. Let's get a conversation started about that. That's a whole different video, but I'd love to see uh, if you've seen it. It's I interesting. Have. I have. I've seen it a couple of times, and you can find bootleg legitimate copies on Blu-ray, um, which is interesting. All right, y'all. Speaking of DC and all the fun stuff happening at Warner Brothers, this week we got a new name on uh david's list of uh kevin feige finders whatever you want to call it um and this one noah's already done a video on it definitely go check that out um i want to give my thoughts on it because of everybody that's on this list this is the one i want um i know i've seen berlanti on the list and a few other people but I'm sorry, y'all. Dan Lin is a genius when it comes to producing movies. I think out of everybody that's on that list, this is the man you want. This is your DC Kevin Feige. Um, I mean, that that's 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 all I'm gonna say about it. That's I'm just excited about it. But definitely go check out Noah's video. Um, he touches more on it. Um, just wanted to get that out there. I'm excited too. Like like in my original video, it's it's gonna be fantastic, but. Quit calling it Marvel or DC's found it's Kevin Feige. You're not going to. There's no equivalent, right? 
it just just say DC found the right person or Warner found the right person to spearhead DC films. And you know what is the craziest thing too about this whole Warner Discovery merger is like I feel it's going to be like sixty percent Discovery, forty percent Warner. Right? There is a and I shit you not a um, ninety day fiance extended universe that's going to be a hub in whatever new streaming platform this is going to be. That's going to be a thing you can click on, folks, in the future. You can watch the Snyder Cut one night and then you click on the 90 Day Fiance Extended Universe, whatever the shit that is. <laughs> I'm going to watch it because I love 90 Day Fiance. Big Ed, I love you, baby. Shout out. Um, we're not friends in real life, you know, just in my head, but still, one day. <laughs> one day. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I don't know. Speak of that real quick. I think I I can you imagine just being Kevin Feige and everyone because this isn't the first time. So when they tried to do their dark universe, uh, the monster universe, that's when this really got rolling. Where we like we got to find a Kevin Feige. That just shows you that this man had what this man has done. He's done something nobody's done before. I mean, you got to think of the MCU is the biggest thing on the planet. It yes, has the most movies in a franchise that I can think. I mean, that's by the end of 2025 there'll be like what 40 movies in this franchise in the and that's what 14 years of movie it's it's wild so i yeah that man is a genius he's accomplished so much he yes. can pretty much buy and do anything on the planet he wants to except for get a new head of hair oh oh yeah <laughs> keep on buying hats kevin feige keep on buying hats all right, our main story this week that we want to talk about is the Flash movie had a test screening. And this is exciting. So it has, the Warner executives have watched it. They watched it months ago uh, and they gave it a standing ovation. But they also gave Batman versus Superman a standing ovation. So you can't really take their word for it. But this was, this test screening was done with an audience of people like us and they all praised it. This also is Warner's highest test score since the Nolan Batman movies. So now I want to see this movie so much more. <laughs> I do too. And I want to, whatever it takes, internet people, beautiful people. If you are a Cloudy Sky Entertainment fan, I want to be a DC comic shill. So I can go to a test screen. All I want in my life is happiness for my family and for me to go to a test screening of like a movie like the flash imagine how how awesome it would be i would sign every single nda in the world but i would still give uh, honest thoughts about that um i just want to be in a room full of people that see a movie in advance and give a standing ovation or maybe don't give a standing ovation i think it's a very strong indication with with maybe what's going on because i, I do think that when zasloff came along he has made some decisions about the flash film that probably related to why this has got a standing ovation this is not the same flash film that was even existed two months ago before Zaslav. i do think that they've changed some things around for the better and probably this test screening is the result of that i'm excited have you ever done a test screening for a movie i have never done i've I, some, I sometimes I just go to the mall and walk around like and I'm looking for people with clipboards. I go to movie theaters, <laughs> to see regular, regular things. I'm like, but no, I've never been to a test screening and it's on my bucket list. So if you guys are watching out there, even if it's a test screening of like, I don't even care. The Barbie movie hit Noah Drake Bell up. I want to go. What I've about you? A, I've done a few. They're interesting. So you get there and uh, well, the test screenings I've gone to there, there was two security guards by the door there was a guy with a clipboard because he had your name and all your info uh, and then one of the security guards has a box with these ziploc bags and you put your name on the ziploc bag and your phone goes in that ziploc bag and it gets dropped into the the box and you get your phone when you leave um and then you have to yeah you have to sign like it was like a one-page nda it wasn't anything major or anything but uh yeah it's uh they take that stuff very seriously and then as you leave you do have to fill out you know, this little questionnaire thing of what you thought of the movie and all that fun stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I've even done, um, oh, I did this as a part-time thing. Um, so you can be a theater auditor. Have you ever seen this before? I've done no. this before. 
Um, so it doesn't pay very well. It's why I don't do it anymore. But you go into the theaters and you just watch trailers. You go around the theater and you look at it and you mark down what the theater's doing, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. You got to make sure all the trailers, because you have a list of what the trailers are that are supposed to be on front of this movie. And yeah, and sometimes you get to watch the movie for free. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's just an interesting job. It just doesn't pay very well. <laughs> so I imagine not. otherwise everyone would be doing it instead of you know making this uh youtube career take off but you know what exactly. we're, you we're get, making strides we're you don't get strides. paid to test screen movies either yeah i did the, the, the one you do get because you're auditing theaters but uh but yeah y'all that's this week in geekdom news uh definitely go in the comment section let us know what you're excited for uh this upcoming week we've got another episode of she hulk we got yes. sort of a house of dragons um a weird owl trailer is dropping this week it is it um, is absolutely drops on the 29th your boy noah drake bell is going to dragon con next weekend and yes catch noah at dragon con definitely go up to him and hug him no maybe don't hug him. Uh, no you can hug me i'll take a thousand <laughs> hugs you know i'll take all the hugs you want to all the high fives and but i'll spe specifically if you got ribbons and buttons and pins i'm a whore for that kind of thing all the free swag. Give me your swag. And I'll be handing out swag too. So see me there and you might win some, not win some, just if you see me, you win because I'm in your presence. But uh, you also might get some like free swag, but I can't wait to film videos from Dragon Con and do all kind of fun stuff. But we want to know in the comments below too, are you guys digging Geek End Updates? Uh, if you are, let us know. And uh, as always, you know, thank you very much for watching Cloudy Sky Entertainment. I'm Noah Drake Bell. I want you guys to stay classy. And I'm Nerdy Dustin. I want y'all to keep being nerdy. We'll see y'all in the next video.